Very well, my friends, it is time. I extend my hand, inviting you to step with me into fantasy. Release your hold on that which you know to be true, and let imagination rule for the next few hours. Adventurers continued their exploration of Ramazith's Tower. You were searching for a book written by Father Corcoran Pebblemoss, a priest of Agma. He removed several curses from some of you that were received while exploring the Dungeon of the Dead Three. In return, you were to recover his book and take his charge, Jax the Goblin, out into the world to see how high he can climb or how far he can fall. After exploring several rooms, meeting a beguiling succubus and a bad-tempered rug, you entered a delightful indoor garden being tended by the dryad, Apple. She told you of her mother, Abela, and that the two of them were prisoners of the beholder known as Ramazith. After discovering the secret caracol that led upstairs, you ascended, discovering a furious battle waiting for you. The Feywild creature known as Abela was perched atop a shambling mound that was attempting to crush a beholder which it had engulfed. The mound attacked you and you fought back, but you soon realized that the more damage you did to it, the more alive the beholder seemed and the more desperate Abela became. Shielding your eyes from her blinding beauty as best you could, you targeted the beholder, eventually weakening it enough for Abela's power to charge the shambling mound and crush Ramazith but not before your companion Falcon fell to its powerful blows. Her soul had all but left her body when Silas picked her up and, somehow, restored her to herself, only to fall to the floor himself, senseless. You carried your companions and Abela back to Apple and used the power in the garden to revive her. She healed Falcon, but could do nothing for Silas. Apple revealed the invisible box of treasure that had been hidden here and gifted you an acorn from her tree. Then she and Abela stepped into the pool and departed from the material plane. There you sit, adventurers, surrounded by an incongruously beautiful garden, some of you charmed and completely at ease, some of you less so. Silas lies unconscious. What do you do? We forgot to ask the spirits about the book. I immediately scramble over to Silas in my bare nakedness and uh, uh, touch him. And, I gave and, you a blanket. Oh, Thank lovely. You. Thank yeah. you. I want to say, so in like the blanket wrapped around me, I, I then like lay hands on him to spare the dying so that I may somehow at least keep him from the brink, not knowing um, his condition. The spell does go off. But even as it does, you look down and you see there's no wound that you can see. Um, he's breathing evenly. He appears to be merely asleep. Abela said he wasn't here. He's alive, though. And yes. That's what matters. Should we bury him? No. Jax, no. We... <laughs> he's alive! Jax! Okay. So we're not burying him? No. No. I not alive, no. Do you have experience burying people alive? Or... No. <laughs> Good. The right answer, yes. <laughs> Roll for insight. <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're welcome to. Welcome to. <laughs> Where are my clothes? Uh, they got um, eaten off by the magic pool. I, 
They're with my boots. Ah. Yes, it uh, seems to um, devour anything that's not uh, alive. Small price to pay for being alive, I guess. As I recall, your armor was removed. Yes. I'm saying, I didn't want to Rim, be like, actually, it's the, not yeah. gone. Though <laughs> 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 so that sounds uncomfortable. <laughs> But um, it might look awesome. Yeah. <laughs> Whew, it's going to be chilly. Actually, it's still probably warm from when uh, when she heated your armor. Oh, yeah. No, I'll be, oh, be, be like a hot pocket. That'll be lovely. That's right. <laughs> Very nice. Oh. Um, do you have any questions about the treasure that was found? Um that's Actually, it wouldn't be a bad idea to go over what it was that we yeah, found. We found okay. the books, and including a spell book and the book that we were looking for. Well, there were... Oh. Oh. No, we didn't. Good? We didn't find the book that we were looking we for. Did. We did. We did indeed. It was hidden in the acorn. Uh, nope. No? No. Nope. That's, no. A different, that's a different game, Rim. You're playing. Yeah. It's a, oh. Yeah. <laughs> exactly, and, and and that it, it's perfectly normal to be feeling that in this room. That definitely does have its effect. Um, you have an invisible box, a bag of holding, mm -hmm. um, one hundred and fifty gold pieces, one elixir of health, Jailmorn's mm -hmm. stone of transference. But uh, you not aware of that? You just it's a pink stone in a golden cup. They seem to be one piece. Um, four spell books. Um, and tucked in between one of the spellbooks' pages was a long list of what appeared to be book titles. And next to each title, there are three numbers. And next to the title, Decrypting the Inferno, a comprehensive study of the innards and rep reproductive biology of our devilish cousins, are the numbers 5, 3, and 11. So we have a catalog number for the book we are looking for. Excellent. Now, when we go back into the room that we can't talk in, try not to, you know, kill anyone with the stairs. I'm sure that won't happen a second time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. As I walk into the room, you hear me say this. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, what do you do? I, I, did you walk into the room then, Falcon? just then? Well, I uh, after I, uh, I put my armor back on, it's rather toasty. Uh, I just then decided to take the walk across the way, and uh, with those armed with that knowledge, uh, try to find the book. All right, uh, Falkron, if you would be so kind as to move your token over to the library. Absolutely. Um, I believe your armor was deposited here. Excellent. So um, you are um, ba -ba 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 free to put it on there. You are. Uh, you have. You're not charmed by this room, and Persephone leaves, and as you do, you once again become yourself. Rim will carry Silas into the um, into the hallway. Mm -hmm. Very good. I will put Silas there. He's still unconscious. As you pass beyond the geraniums, you are also no longer affected by the calm emotion spell. Doran sort of sits down and I'd love to just spend an afternoon in here. <laughs> I walk back over to the door and say, Doran, come on. We gotta go. I suppose. Fine. Uh, Chax will follow. Reluctantly. As you pass through the geraniums, you are no longer under the effect of the calm emotion spell. Mm. It just leaves Typhon. Yes, I will <laughs> indeed. Yes, <laughs> be good. Um, Falkren, what are you up to? I'm trying to figure out a way in which I could us uh, because uh, the, the books in front of me are invisible. They so, are. So, uh, and then the numbers I'm trying to recall are five, eleven, and um, they are five, three, and eleven. Ah. Five, three, and eleven. So as I stare in front of the books, I'm counting how many bookshelves are there. 
there are were as many as you see. Six bookshelves. So I go to the fifth bookshelf. Okay. How many shelves are on each of the shelves? Uh, you put your hands on it, you feel, and it feels like that there are uh, five shelves on each shelf. Okay. So fifth bookshelf, third shelf, and then I try to like take my fingers and I feel across the top. Hopefully it's better than me finding a door. Um, so I uh, try to feel across the tops of the book bindings to see the uh, find the 11th book. All right. Uh, make a, an investigation check with advantage. It's not that hard. <laughs> Bless you. Just so Ryan and Tess know, there's someone in Twitch chat saying hello to you. Okay. Oh, cool. Um, yes, I'm on you, Twitch, but I can't see the chat. That's cool. You um, you have uh, found a book. Falkron. Uh, and then, uh, obviously, still very much invisible, yes? Yes, it is still invisible. Hmm. Hmm. So I'm going to... So then I, I'm, I've got a hunch. I'm going to take the book out of the library. Okay. And as I cross the threshold. Uh, this was tried before and it does not seem to work. The book is, you can feel the heft, you can feel the pages, um, but it does not reappear. Damn. All right, friends. Well, I think I've got it. So hmm. I, I walk. Is uh, Sean is right here? Is that dirt on the ground? That is dirt on the ground. Yes. So can I walk to here and reach over and grab a handful of dirt? Yes. Without having to be affected by the spell. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I do that, and then I I come back over and I put a little bit of the dirt on what would be the book cover to see if the book what? cover is embossed at all. Interesting. Um, it is embossed. Can and I read anything? Dirt, <laughs> yes, you rub the dirt on, you get it nice and fine, and you um, you make this outside of the book dirty, and you see uh, the words um, understanding devilish reproductive. Well done, Persephone! <laughs> to serve mankind. <laughs> exactly. I don't think this is our book. Um, that was not the impression that the DM wished to make. This is, oh, in sorry. fact, your book. Yeah. This is the no, book. This is the yeah. book. Oh, okay. Oh, I misunderstood. You Never mind. Retcon. We found the book. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Did did you misunderstand my well done, Persephone? <laughs> it's like, oh, good Clearly. job, Persephone. You made the dirt. <laughs> this is how we clean books in, you know, bards, honestly. <laughs> All right. You have recovered Corcoran Pebblemoss's book. That was very clever, Falcron. You solved that immediately. Is hmm. there anything you wish to do? Being dead gives you fantastic perspective. So, I hope to never try it. I will take your word for that. We we still need to get past the thing in the hallway, if I'm not mistaken. Oh no, that's only going up. The stair, the, the uh, doorway is. Uh, you could see there's still a little glowing arcane lock there. I got rid of that next to the thing, but the most of the door has been dissolved by yeah. uh, by uh, Jax. So it will be a pretty simple matter to get through. Oh. It was already going upstairs, I think, where the monster is. <gasps> ah, well, all right then. So, I'll let you we... go first. <laughs> You've been dead before, so that makes much more sense. <laughs> Never thought I'd say this, but I can't fault your logic, Jax. So, right who then. is carrying Silas? I will. I'm sorry. All right, Rim has Silas. You are done. Okay, doke. Who's done? I was just, just checking. Done. Oh, all right. <laughs> it's like, you are done. You are done. You are over. <laughs> you are kaput. Game over. Oh, um, 
He's just could killing just, people left and right. Could <laughs> I just pass my eyes once more over this? Just like, you know, when you can't find something because you're looking too closely at everything, just let my gaze sweep across this room and if anything just of piques course. my interest. Well, um, the first thing you notice is that there is no longer a circle of glowing runes on the floor here. Yeah. Um, then your eyes fall on the um, alchemical set here, and you recall that there was a experiment in progress, and you thought that with a little time you might be able to complete it. But other than that, with a cursory examination, you do not see anything else. Okay. Um, I will say to the group, I, if, if I'm recalling correctly, though, it was part way through the brewing of a potion of invisibility or something there like were that. definitely components of that would be in a potion of invisibility as far as you are aware you've never made such a potion but you've read books that contain the various components okay. that required um i will say then that i believe we could take advantage of some of the work that was already begun here i think i can finish whatever this thing was up to at the alchemical table. I just had a moment. Would this be something you'd be interested in? How much time would you need? It will depend on how well you roll. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure yet, but if I begin, if I can see the reactions take place in front of me, I can get a better gauge of things. May I? I don't see why not. This group has always, already done more for me than I could ever hope to ask, so if you need a few moments, I'd gladly give them. Oh, Rim is very kind of you. Um, yes, it will make that be a uh, alchemic a chemical tool. Um, check, please. Okay. As he makes that roll, I check in with Rim to make sure that the statue is still in his on his person. I show it to him in the pocket. In- still in my pocket and conceal it again is it still i sorry i accidentally whispered it but my result of my role is a 20. i see yes you will be able to complete this with 20 minutes oh well done i will communicate that to the group and with a, a score of 20 you realize that while it would be very easy for you to make a potion of invisibility this was actually working on creating something else Dust of Disappearance. Ah, awesome. Interesting. Do so, I know what this is then? The properties? Can I look it up? Uh, yes, with a with a you you succeeded the um the difficulty in the difficulty class in determining everything you need to know about this. Mm. Um, Doran looks at Rim and says, "How is he?" Quiet. I'm concerned. Oh. I have no idea where he is, but he's not with us. Hmm. Well, you don't have to hold him this whole time, you know. Hmm. I'm prepared to make a quick getaway if necessary. Why? I mean, I suppose I'd do the same, but why are you so concerned? I don't know. I feel connected to him somehow. I was raised amongst elves, or I was raised by an elf. At the moment, he's the closest thing to family that I have. Hmm. That's an, it must be an interesting story. Hmm. Doran keeps talking, but as he does, his voice kind of fades out. And you hear, Rim, I might be able to help your friend. And there is a soft caress on your hand. I look to my hand. Do Seems I see anything? To be another one resting atop it. It's clawed and scaled like yours. Silver, but with a brighter sheen. And you recognize the voice of Lila. Mm. I push the voice out of my head. 
tall, lithe female dragonborn seems to step out of you and turns gracefully to face you. She is semi-translucent and she smiles at you with sleepy looking eyes. She slowly unfurls her wings and they spread wide, obscuring the rest of the room from view. A challenging pose, inviting either battle or courtship. Ethereal though she seems, it would be easy to understand how one could wish she was here in the flesh. Rim, you are the only person who sees this. Do I hear the voice in my head, or you, do I feel like do I feel like I'm hearing it aloud? You, it's difficult to determine, um, but you can kind of see Doran still talking, and his voice seems to be muffled. So your uh, your best guess is that this is actually coming to you from your head. I respond in my head, who are you? I've already introduced myself, but I'm happy to do it again. My name is Elila. You're carrying me in your pocket. You appear to me as a dragonborn, but I know you not to be one. Hmm. The form you saw me in earlier was the one that I was compelled to take whenever summoned. But the magic that forced me to do that and many other things has been broken by you and your companions. Now the only thing that I'm bound to is the statue. I could help your friend, Rim. It what do you the know least I can do for what you've already done for me. What do you know of where he is? Nothing. As far as I can tell, he's merely asleep, but I have powers. I could use them to aid him. In return for my freedom. We do intend to free you, but we still do not trust you. <laughs> you appear as what you want me to see. But I still don't believe that you're here to help us. Well... We could make it more official. What do we you could propose? make a contract. You free me, and in return, I aid your friend. In fact, I could aid your friend first, if you in turn promised to free me. Rim thinks very hard for a moment, and he looks at Elila. We do intend to free you, but I will not make a contract with somebody I do not trust. How disappointing. Well, at any rate, I get chills just thinking about the opportunity to get to know you better. Can I make, I'm gonna make an insight check based on what it is I hear her saying. Uh, what specifically do you want to know about? I'm trying to get a general <laughs> feel for whether or not I... She I, is incredibly trust trustworthy. <laughs> With a role of a natural one, I would say <laughs> that you believe her. You see genuine empathy in her eyes. She's gorgeous. She's everything you could hope for in a female dragonborn. And what she's asking is really not that much. If things were to be codified in a contract that seemed equitable to all parties, there's no reason not to trust that she would hold her end of the bargain. But I also encountered her as a, as a fiend, and I, that, that image is still in my head, and I have not a, a natural loathing for fiends. So <laughs> I... I trust her and I will I, I do promise that I will free her but I'm still I, I I will not engage in a contract until all right until I'm going I, I you you of course welcome to do what you want but okay. with a roll of a one you have no reason not to believe that she is not going so if you don't want to that's perfectly fine okay but it's it's you're doing it you're you are doing it for no reason as far as your character is concerned okay um, um yes can we see that rim is like 
elsewhere. Doran has gone this is on. He's, he's been talking. He's been sort of drawing on about how, okay. you know, he's, he's, he's been thinking about leaving the Flaming Fist. But now that he sees that some good can come out of it, he thinks that maybe he'll stick with it and all these things. And, and, and Rim has kind of been watching him. And <laughs> it's hard to tell whether or not he's listening or if his eyes have glazed over. Okay. <laughs> all right. Um, I pull out the statue and I... Uh, and I and I say to everyone, um, Elila spoke to me. As soon as you speak the name Elila, there is a flash, and she appears in front of everybody exactly in this form. Hello again, friends. It's nice to see a different part of the tower. You're a dragonborn now. This is her yes. true form as he says. But... Excuse me, what? I can lead my, from, from the, lead my head over from around the corner in the laboratory. It's the, just keep working on your potion thing. Insight check to see if she's actually telling the truth about this being her true form. Oh, the... She didn't say that. Rim said it. Hmm. But you're welcome to make an insight check. Okay. If you just tell me what it is you're trying to insight. She's just, just sort of standing there. Yeah. And she's so. spreading her wings and stretching, looking like she's uh, able to take in more of her space than she has in quite some time. I, I really want, oh. I, I want, I want to figure out if this is actually her form, or if she's putting on some sort of glamour, or if there's like, just like, because I don't trust that she's a dragonborn. That doesn't. All right. Um, hmm. We'll make an arcana check to see if there's a, a spell in, in effect here. Lovely. All right, so. Well, she appears to be a dragonborn. May I pause things in my little... <laughs> May you. Hmm. There we are. That is generally not uh, a favorable thing with uh, creating alchemical combats, but I will let you do it. Um, I, I don't know how far I am through this, and it's like, is it going to... Exp <laughs> Explode? Is there a good it stopping probably, point? It probably won't explode. Okay. I can let but, something simmer for a little while. Okay, yeah, sure. Make something simmer. Okay, I'll leave it. <laughs> I'll put it on the back burner, as it were. And um, I, this is very concerning to me, and I would like to... Uh, Rim, I ask you one more time. May I see this statue for just a moment? I'd like to hold it a little longer. She turns Please to you and raises an eyebrow. You want to hold me as well? <clears throat> Rim? It's been a long time since I've been this popular. Rim, what did she say to you? She wants to help him. I do. She... Help who? Well, to be perfectly honest, I want to be free from this statuette. That's going to happen. Wonderful. Let's let it happen now. I will aid your friend. And in return, you will free me. How can you aid him? Any number of ways. So you don't even know if you can do it. Ah, very clever. Yes, indeed. There are a multitude of possibilities in the word aid. It could be anything from slaying one of his rivals to giving him a haircut. So, <laughs> if you've want things to be more specific that can be arranged I think that would help uh, we are going to free you but I have to bow to my party not wanting to do that in a place where we are so compromised but if you could tell us how you would help and why we can trust you then maybe I can convince them to do it a little faster hmm she takes a look at Silas. I am not sure what ails him, but I do have power. If you were to free me, perhaps I could be of service. So we free you first? No. First we make a contract. Then I do what I can 
and then you free me. Counter offer. You do what you can to save our friend, and then we discuss freeing you. Mm. Unfortunately, I am bound by certain laws. In a situation like this, where there is something so clear-cut, something I want and something that you want, there must be a contract. Falcron, what's the difference between what you're saying and we're going to free her anyway, right? To, to speak bluntly, she, <laughs> this is a creature of, of a creature of hell. She said that a dragonborn is her true form. Uh, truth, truth. But at the same time, she just said that the way in which we phrase a thing can either like give Silas a haircut or, you know, murder somebody. So you need to be very careful with the contract then, I would agree. Well, and that's the thing is I wouldn't willingly enter into a contract. I simply want our friend saved. And then this creature freed and no bindings between us. Also, mm, what are the could... chances that this creature is suddenly in the grasp, in the hands of our silver dragonborn friend, comes to him in his head as a similar form? It just so happens to be that she's actually the form of a silver dragonborn. I'm sorry, this is awfully suspect. I don't trust it. No. Mim, will you please let me see the statue? Maybe the reason I wanted to hold it is because I knew what her form was in my heart. Do you believe that, Rim, or are you holding out on me? I do believe that. But if you want to see the statue, he has it really over. I really do. Jack's okay. eating <laughs> flowers like popcorn at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> I will right, sigh and then angry. I will begin spell slot just because we need to speed this up using a spell slot to um, cast identify on the statue. All right. This is a component for the spell. Very, very powerful spell imprisonment. Um, there are several other spells, sort of a tweaking of the various details, but in a sense, it is a object in which um, this particular entity has been trapped. Um, when her name is spoken, and while someone is by someone who is holding the statuette, she will appear um, for a, a period of time and then disappear back into the statue. Uh, breaking the statue will lift the curse. Dispelling the statue will lift the curse. Does it um, give any hint to her actual form, the spell? It does not. And she stands there as a dragonborn, looking at you as you examine the statuette with her eye, with her eyebrow raised. <sighs> really, it's not that complicated. Well, I think the thing that we all agree is that... We're not sure whether to trust her, and if we're not sure, then we shouldn't let her out here. So why don't we go now? If she's going to help our friend, we have to take advantage of that. I don't think even the Fae couldn't help. Well then, I do not so. trust the goodwill of a fiend. I uh, won't fiends, trust the goodwill of hell, a fiend. They're just names. Just places, creatures. I mean, there's nicer places to be sure, but parts of hell can be quite beguiling, depending on your company. Regardless, I don't think that a sentient creature should be imprisoned against their will, unless we know for sure that that's where they need to be, and we don't. We know Apple was imprisoned against her will and we let her go. Apple is not a creature of the hells. I can think of several who would disagree. But it's all a matter of perspective, isn't it? Look, friends, the task at hand in front of us is we were sent to get this book to then return it. And then I'm sure the Brothers of Ogma would aid us in trying to either help Silas or give us knowledge as to how to correctly deal with our other dragonborn friend. 
or they might just take it and we'd never see it again. The statue. Did you say temple to Ogma? I did. This is where we are returning. Uh, I really don't want to go in there. Why? For the same reason that I'm assuming you all don't want to go to hell. Fair enough. Don't. Oh, just, just remember, that's my treasure. <laughs> right, you are, Jackson. I can tell that this is going nowhere. Very well, I will retire. Good luck with your friend. I'll be seeing you, Rim. And she vanishes. I don't think she has a choice in that, in fact. But we should be wary about saying her name. Indeed. It seems to summon her and... Who knows, if she grows tired of us, she may request the aid of other gullible servants. Tyrapon, would you carry the statue for a time, if Rim is amenable to that? I'd prefer to carry it myself. I'd prefer it too, darling. He makes an <laughs> did, involuntary did, did, twitch in the sound of the that? voice. <laughs> only Rim, only hear Rim that? hears that, yes. <laughs> I was like, well, that settles it. <laughs> <laughs> you truly think she's a dragonborn? I do. I'm sorry, I will not give you this statue. Rim growls under his breath, but he chooses not to start a fight in the middle of the tower. For Silas's, For Silas's sake, we should be moving. We need to see to him. For Silas's sake, maybe we should have helped her now and let him help. Let her help him. How? How does helping a fiend help Silas? She told you. You. There's no reason for us not to trust her, except for where she's from. No, there is excellent reason not to trust her. Trust. I, the, in our first dealing with her, she. I do not trust that woman. That, that thing. We have ways potentially to help Silas. You saw there are powerful healers at the temple to Ogma, it would seem. But making a deal with a devil, really? When we have other resources, we have not yet checked. All right. But I do want to remind us all that we promised to take her out of that statue. And, and I will hold true to that promise. And we will not break that vow but I will not enter into a contract with a fiend just because it aids us in the moment. All right. Finish your experiment, Typhon. Let's leave. Mm. I was going to yeah. finish that off for you. <laughs> <laughs> Jackson there. Just a little bit. There you go. <laughs> just a little bit of this stuff. A little bit of that. <laughs> no, please don't. <laughs> All right, Typhon, you have successfully completed the experiment. You now have in your possession Dust of Disappearance. Wonderful. Who has the acorn? Just don't want to forget that. Spit it out, Jax. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think it was me. Uh, I can't remember who did she hand it to. Was it me? Or was I, it, didn't she, she give I, it to um, I thought she gave it, it to Doran. Oh, she gave it to I thought Doran. it was Doran, yeah. yeah. Doran looks at it and says, well, I don't know what I'm going to do with this thing. <laughs> I'll have it, as I've lost my time <laughs> <Yeah>. treasure. <laughs> Enjoy. Cool. I've got to write an icon in my equipment now. All right. You leave Ramazith's tower. You descend carefully past the stair blight, who some of you think still looks like a very nice, ornate, set of stairs and others think no that that's definitely a monster um <laughs> you go down the six stairs you encounter loro akan again who is there uh, ah <laughs> i cannot believe it you have returned um what did you find stairs yeah, a yes, lot yes. oh yes please do tell i'm very curious I wouldn't uh, go past the sixth floor. Ah. So he's still very dangerous. Oh, extremely dangerous. Well, Exceedingly. I, 
I will stay on the first mm -hmm. two floors again. Right? But there is a, a library there for people who can't see, and also, uh, let's see, a, a window that offers a really great view for a very short amount of time. <laughs> um, well, can I interest any of you in an impermeable enchantment? Uh, do I know what this enchantment is? Yeah, I was like, Typhon, what's an impermeable? Impermeable. <laughs> it, uh, it means um, no may wet. No make wet. Um, I it need to make um, us waterproof. That's what I was going to ask. <laughs> uh, I protect it from the water and. Uh, how is word? Um, ah, mildew. Um, I don't like water very much. Ah well, uh, uh, I'm afraid I uh, <clears throat> do not. Uh, I do not deal with goblins. Then we don't deal with you. Hmm. Well said, Jack has a really nice grin on his face. <laughs> 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 then, uh, if you uh, are not going to purchase the impermeable enchantment, and if your business is concluded, then please depart. We bid you good day. Good Who's only joking? You can't go above the sixth floor. <laughs> <laughs> looks at you, sort of, with an eyebrow raised, and hmm, looks to the stairs as you all sort of leave. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I could roll a deception, but it's minus one. <laughs> Eleven. Uh, that's enough to get him interested. <laughs> you head back out into the city, the upper city, and where would you like to go? Back to Agma, yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Or at least we can get some answers. You uh, walk about 20 minutes towards the Temple of the Unrolled Scroll. As you approach Typhon, the statuette begins to be uncomfortably warm wherever you have stashed it. <laughs> I will, um, let's see, take it out and wrap it in a bit of fabric to just help against that. You hear a voice, you hear a <sighs> sort of frustrated sigh in your head as you do this. Everything all right, Typhon? Yes, I think we are um, starting to irritate our unnamed and will continue to be unnamed friend in the statue. She who must not be named. Yes, indeed. <laughs> Crossing the street. She who I'd rather not summon again just yet. I'd be annoyed with us too. You step into the temple of the unrolled scroll and unrolled scroll and you see there the uh, reflecting pool. Um, Persephone, I don't believe you were sick the last time the uh, crew was here. You know that there is a legend about this pool that um, artists and songwriters and people who create, if they uh, sit and uh, meditate by the pool for a period of time, they will often find inspiration for their next creation. Excellent. Um, and uh, an acolyte comes with, can I help you? <laughs> yes, we are here to see Corcoran Pebbleboss. Father Corcoran Pebblemoss is visiting hours are between the third and sixth bell he in the morning. He sent us specifically to seek an item for him. Please tell him we have returned with Jax. <sighs> Fine. Thank you. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> he wanders off. We have at least three people. Can we speak to the right manager, now. please? <laughs> <laughs> that, I imagine that helper's name is Karen. <laughs> <laughs> After a few minutes, another acolyte comes hurrying over and says, Ah, yes, yes, um, please, uh, Corcoran, Father Corcoran is, is, is expecting you. And he leads you to Father Corcoran's study. Thank you. 
<laughs> you've returned. It was a short work. Yes, yes. Well, um, not entirely uh, easy, but uh, successful. I was wondering, Father, if you might be able to help our friend. And I gesture to Rim. Rim. Yes. <laughs> I uh, I set I set Silas's body on a, where? What room are we in? Is there a table? In, in his study. On? Yes, there is a okay. table. I uh, gently set him on the table in front of him. Oh, well, um, I believe yes. When I described the study before, um, it's there are some chairs that are large enough for bigger people, but it has clearly been designed for someone of small stature. So his desk is actually not big enough for you to lay Silas upon. So either in one of the chairs or I will kind of drape over place the him, I will set him on the chair. Okay, so he's draped in the chair. His head lolls back a little bit. His mouth droops open. Ah. Unconscious, is he? Something more. <sighs> Comes over and pokes and prods at him, sniffs a little, <laughs> hmm. opens up one of his eyes. <laughs> as far as I can tell, he's just asleep. Wake up! <laughs> <laughs> well, that didn't work. Hmm. Mm. No, I tried he that one. Expended a great bit of his energy trying to heal our dwarf cleric friend here. Oh, I see. Wounded was she? I, yes, grievously so. I. Well, that could be it. Um, hey, wounded beyond is an understatement. I do believe I saw the last breath leave you. I've seen it before. The death rattles. Mm, Corcoran raises an eyebrow. Oh. I'm not sure what happened. I. You died. I think. Uh, well, I can detect nothing wrong with him physically. Um, uh, in situations like this, I think it's best that we just let him last. You know, the body often will do what the body needs to do. If another day goes by and he has not awoken, then we'll see what we can do to make sure his corporeal functions are maintained with water and food, but I would say just let him rest for now. Is he's there a place? To do so. Yes, of course. He's oh. welcome to do that. Now, uh, do you have my book? What? Oh, yes. Speaking of corporeal functions, yes, what? we have... Right here in my hand. Well, right, yeah, right here. It, it uh, really is there. You're not playing a joke on an old man, are you? Uh, if you if you look at the dirt rubbings, which was Persephone's idea, sorry about that, um, you'll see that it is, in fact, your manuscript. Oh, look at that. Hmm. Uh, that bastard Ramazes. Um, well, this is it. Uh, uh, let's see. Oh, I, I know. I have some people who can help me with this. <laughs> oh, there it is. Back. Uh, I still have to wait to read it, though. How frustrating. <laughs> mm. oh, if only oh, gold was here. Oh, well. Um, very well. Uh, how did uh, how did Jax do? Jax, my boy! What did you think of Baldur's Gate? Great. And I did really, really good. I'm glad to hear it. I got he some treasure. Adorn. Doors. Oh yeah, he did. He did a good job. He, um, he, uh, yeah, he just fine. <laughs> I did suggest we bury the dead one. Uh, well, yeah, generally, that's probably a good idea. But yeah, especially when you uh, encounter interesting things out in the world, you should uh, you should be aware that dead does not always necessarily mean dead. <laughs> that could be both a good and a bad thing, by the way. Hmm. He looks confused. Typhon, did you want to ask Father Pebblemoss about the um... statue? About the statue? Yeah, about, about yes. the statue. I'm about to produce an item here, and upon the bottom of its stand is inscribed a particular name. I would ask you not to speak it aloud. It seems to summon the fiend which has been trapped within. Jesus. Alleged fiend. Oh. 
a fiend, you say? No. And Corcoran goes and steps, sits behind his desk and pulls out his pipe and says, well, that happens to be my area of expertise. <laughs> Describe this fiend, if you will. She appeared first her. in a beautiful female form. Very, um, well, beautiful is the, is all I will say. And spoke sweetly to us, offered us the chance to make a deal in order for some service. Um, mm. Did she flirt? In exchange for her freedom as well. Did she flirt? Incessantly. <laughs> yes. Uh, I think what you have there is an Infernus Diabolicus Eroticus. Uh, in the lay terms, a succubus. That's what I said. <laughs> um, hmm. Well, uh, well, obviously a very dangerous creature. Um, trapped within this statuette, you said? Yeah, yeah. Indeed. Uh, By an the... imprisonment spell. Hmm, well, I would suggest uh, she should stay there. <laughs> the uh, world is no place for fiends to be gallivanting about. Could it's... she not be taken out of the imprisonment and sent somewhere else then? Well, uh, of course, but it's taking a risk. Well, fiends belong in hell, not on the prime material plane, and, and whatever they are, out, uh, they invariably cause mischief. Is there Especially a way? In, a is there a way in which? Well, two questions, Father. One: Has a succubus ever have a the form of a dragonborn? Well, a succubus could take whatever form she wants. Ah, and then two: uh, Is there a way in which we could break this imprisonment, but then also send her back to her natural realm? She also claims to be able to have the power to help our friend, who I know that you say just needs to rest, but there's nothing physically wrong with him. His soul is somewhere else. Well, that's an interesting supposition. Are you an expert in such things? I'm not I... in the slightest. Per Persephone, I don't mean to step on toes here, but I would trust Father Corcoran more than I would a fiend. Uh, I'm not suggesting. I would say it's yeah. very wise of you, but it seems like an <laughs> easy choice to make. Well, it wasn't so easy a few hours ago. We'll put it that way. Uh, let me tell but you this. Uh, mm -hmm. If uh, devils in particular are very beholden to contracts, if you have a very, and I mean very carefully worded contract with the devil, uh, it is possible that you could get her to do most anything, provided that what you offer is valuable. Usually, the currency is your soul. Uh, upon your death, you would, instead of going to your final resting place, uh, be transported to hell, where you would be reborn as the lowest of all devils. A truly wretched existence. That wasn't the payment she was asking for. Hmm. Well, what was she asking for then? The contract to stipulate that she would save si uh, to save Silas before. Uh, she was then released. Save Silas. He's perfectly fine. How can you say that? Even even the Fae that we worked with said that she he was beyond her ability to bring back. But perhaps we just allow some time to elapse and we see if Silas recovers. If he does not, then then you know he uh, for all intents and purposes he's he's breathing. He is well, just not here. Mm. To be perfectly honest, I don't know what's wrong with him. And while I think my advice of letting him rest is good, it could be that he is in grave danger. I don't know. If he expended a great deal of energy, that could possibly explain why he's unconscious, but 
Mm. I think it runs deeper than that. Well then, Father Corcoran, would you help us, aid us in perhaps constructing a contract wherein we can help our friend and free this fiend and at the same time not unleash it on the material world? Is, is uh, no, it? no, I will not help you make a contract with a fiend. I'm, uh, I'm afraid that is definitely beyond my ken. And you can certainly not do it here. I would caution you against doing it at all. Any destruction such a creature would cause would be on your heads. Well, it's on our heads if we let our friend live forever in purgatory. When we could potentially save him. I'm curious, Father... The nature of fiends themselves here. Mm, yes. I want to be sure that we do not end up beholden to this thing. That though we think we are being careful, we're not already lapping up its honeyed words. Well. Your wisdom on the situation? I find myself extraordinarily tempted by its offers, but perhaps that's the point. And perhaps each of us is tempted in a different way. Uh, devils definitely excel at temptation. Make a perception, uh, a, a, a persuasion check, Typhon. Okay. Uh, wow, well done. Oops, oops, nope. I clicked it twice. <laughs> um, I rolled a... It's not popping up for me. It looks it's like 19, 19 to start. 19 to start, yeah. All right, very well, very well. Wow, this is exciting. <laughs> it's been a long time. All right, okay. Um, follow me. And he waves you forward. He goes over to the bookshelf that uh, he revealed the first time you visited his uh, library, the one that Jax came through and it reveals a passageway, and you leave his uh, study and begin creeping down this very narrow and short hallway. Rim, you barely fit. <laughs> it's been a long time since I've been able to talk to a fiend on the material plate. <laughs> I mean, all that research all those years ago, I, I swore I'd never do it again, but one one just drops in one's lap, what, what can one say? <laughs> and he's just sort of scurrying on ahead goes down some steps, scurries on the head some more more steps, and then opens up into a, a wide room filled with books, dust, strange-looking contraptions, pieces of creatures that have been stuffed, some that have been put in jars with liquid uh, claws, snouts, eyeballs, um, just a wide variety of, of all kinds of eldritch and arcane-looking, perfectly harmless things. Um, reams of paper, scrolls, candles, and he says, over here, over here, over here. I knew there was something akin to us. Oh, this is where they tortured me. No, no, no. I told you that's that. a goblin joke. <laughs> Hilarious. Very well. What can we do? First, identify what it is you want specifically try to say it as clearly as possible perhaps we start with the basics and then work our way down so we want our friends we want silas oh, we want our friend back silas back we want silas, silas back conscious healthy unharmed <laughs> They're barking mad. <laughs> <laughs> Things look a little rough. Guys. I love huskies. Uh, yeah, so that's, that's, that's several things. It's interesting. I, I don't know that a succubus has the powers that you are asking her to do. What, what did she say she would do? She didn't specify. She only made the vague offer. Hmm. 
In fact, she did admit that she wasn't even sure how she could help, which is not promising, but it's better than letting him sleep it off. Is it, though? It's probably... I'm... At least it's something. Sleep it's... it off? <laughs> well, I have only met Silas... Um, recently, but I don't think he would mind a few days of sleep and natural healing compared to the waking touch of a creature born in the hells. Mm. Just a thought. True, but if sleeping it off doesn't work, then I imagine he doesn't want to be stuck on some other plane for the rest of his natural existence. And maybe forever? <sighs> Look, I owe Silas my life, and more, so anything we can do to help him, we must. Is there anything that you know that a succubus is capable of that makes you think that she actually could accomplish what we're hoping? Well, maybe she has knowledge that we don't. Maybe... I don't know. Um, hmm. Succubus, and succubi, and incubi, the male form, usually uh, excel in tempting people to give up their souls in return for mm, physical pleasure. Sometimes it can be mm, sexual in nature, or sometimes it can be just a cure for loneliness, maybe mm, aid in some dealing with grief, that sort of thing. It's, uh, hmm. but healing someone, it's not generally what they're known for. But well, why don't we summon the thing itself and see what she has to say? Indeed. Now, before, and before we go, you, you, you keep mentioning souls. That uh, is yes. their truest purpose, their real reason for being. Yes. Well, if a succubus was here and not imprisoned, she would no doubt offer you uh, whatever you wished in return for your soul, where it has to give. Usually, uh, this sort of thing is uh, service. Period is generally nine years. Nine years of service from a fiend in return for your soul. That's the most common contract seems that she might be willing to forgo the soul as long as we gave her her freedom. Yeah, that yes, is something indeed. that she wants. Makes it a lot easier. I agree that summoning her and letting her you speak to her yourself would be a, a wise thing to do. <laughs> uh, well, no, I think it's best if I, if I stay in the shadows and a silent observer. All right. Uh, all right, well, in order to summon a uh, feed here, we'll have to make a few changes. Temporary, you understand, but uh, this is a temple of Ogma, and uh, a fiend would not be very happy here. It would probably, um, it would probably be difficult to have any kind of discourse. So, as long as you're sure this is what you want. Sure that we want you to hear her, her ideas from her own mouth. That's about as far as we've gotten. I think oh, very well. Um, <clears throat> he clasps his hands together and concentrates for a moment. And opens his eyes and they're black. And there is a nimbus of dark light that expands from him. And there's a strange sensation of a pop and you weren't really aware of it before but being in the presence of the temple of agma there was a calming sensation a peacefulness um, a general feeling that nothing bad's going to happen here and that disappears inside this room very well should do it. Who's going to summon her? 
Has she uh -huh. formed a particular attachment to anyone? Yes, but she lied to me. I don't know if I want to be the one to summon her anymore. Sorry, Rim. Typhon, maybe it should be you. And I will say, speak, Elila. <laughs> there is a flash from the statuette, and standing before you is Elila, much as you saw her when you first encountered her in Ramazit's temple. Uh, ah. Ramazit's laboratory. Have you made a decision? She puts one hand on her hip. Not that I have any choice whether you have or not. You need to stop lying to us if we are to make a contract. Oh, I lied! I have not said one untrue thing since I've met you. You're your, true your true form? I assumed a form that I thought he would find pleasing. Which was a lie. And you said it was your true form. You, you didn't have to say that. I never said it was my true form. You said it to me. Hmm. Did I? Hmm. Can't recall, to be perfectly honest. That sounds like another lie. Well said, Jax. I think you are you... not helping us help you. You have to realize you're losing the favor of this group. They were Fine. ready to break the thing a few hours ago, and now... You understand how desperate I am. I have very few tools at my disposal. I'm sure you can appreciate that. And she turns to look at you, Persephone. I just want to be free. That is what I want to help make happen. But you have to start being straight with us. Very well. If we were to make a contract with you... We understand you to be bound to that contract to the word, for Absolutely. good or for ill. And yet you do admit that you are not sure whether you can actually help our friend return to his yes, healthy, normal state. Mm, that is true. I have no idea. How we I could help him return to his normal state, but I might be able to tell you where he is. We also are concerned about where you would go once we release you. Well, if you specify it in the contract, I'll go wherever you want. Although, I can be of great service. I don't think any of us are hopeful to add a fiend to our party, but... Where are you from? Malborg. It is the sixth ah. layer of hell. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I would be happy to send her back there. But can you freely come and go from that layer of hell? No. No fiend can freely come and go onto this plane. We have to be summoned or step through a portal that has been made. And who summoned you? I thought you imprisoned you. I didn't know if it. He was the one who originally summoned you. He was. He summoned me. He imprisoned me. He bent me to his every whim. It was most unpleasant. <laughs> but he's dead. <laughs> and I'm so close to freedom. Nine years. Nine years of my servitude. I could come in quite handy. Did you enter a contract with him? I did. It's part of the reason you found me where you did. Except he tricked her. Did he, he trick kept her you? hidden in there? Yes, he tricked me. Not something easy to admit, but I promise to be honest. And what was your contract with him? What was his end of the bargain? Oh, his end of the bargain was his soul. 
which you presumably now have. I don't have it, actually. Because you're trapped? Yes, I am. And what services did you provide this thing? I really don't want to get into all that. It's... Look, the way forward seems to be the clearest path, so we ask her where Silas is, or how we may help him, and then upon that information, she's released. I'm yes. I'm happy to tell you everything that I know after we sign a contract. I don't wish to sign a contract with a fiend. I don't care what the price is. No. I'll do it for the right reasons. I will do it. It needs to be in the contract that I get to keep the statue of both halves. Absolutely, Jax. That's not fine. a problem. Now, I believe stipulating that she is banished from the material plane back to the sixth layer of hells, Malbog, from which she can never leave. Mm -hmm. Oh, no, again. wait a just a moment. <laughs> oh, what? You don't just want to go home? I do want to go home, but that seems a little restrictive. Can never return? Death is a long time, time. Well, compared to being trapped in a statue, it seems awfully freeing. Are you patient now? How about this? I will return to hell. There to remain for a period of 100 years. It's safer than she would have been in a natural capacity, being able to be summoned whenever somebody thought of it. But the safer she is is in that statue. The statue could be broken by anyone. And on top of that, anyone could also be beguiled by her, one who actually has a desire for someone, something like a succubus. That's true. No, hell is where she belongs, and hell is where she will go. I do think that... It's intriguing to get information from her rather than help, because help could go so much more wrong than information could if we word it incorrectly. But Lila, how, how do we know that if you are part of the contract is to say, you tell us all you know, that you won't just tell us nothing because you know nothing about his condition? Hmm, an interesting point. Very well. I know something. What if, what if we say that you must do everything within your power to restore Silas back to health? Hmm. That could work. Careful. That mean that might mean somebody else is hurt. There Ooh, is clever, clever girl. <laughs> much room for interpretation from one who has used various methods to restore beings back to health. Well, then, how, how do we phrase this? I... Just the information. Don't ask for her help. Ask Just the her information, if... and perhaps how if the information this? proves fruitless, then the banishment is permanent. I like that. Who gets to determine whether or not the information is fruitless? If there's nothing we can do immediately with the information, tangible. Let's, let's say that Silas will have the deciding vote on whether or not the information was fruitless. <laughs> oh. hmm. But if he's corrupted in some capacity, well, he'd have to get conscious first. From his, from his physical lips. Interesting. <laughs> Sorry. So, does somebody have some words they'd like to put down? And what form would you like this contract to take? Do you have what? some templates <laughs> you'd like to share? <laughs> I do, and she turns to look at you with a hungry look in her eyes. Some infernal PDFs. Yeah. 
<laughs> or we can just do a simple scroll. If that would make you more comfortable. Absolutely. Fine. She snaps her fingers and a scroll appears. It unfurls itself in front of you and she points a figure at it and begins to sort of move it. It looks like she's writing. It says, I, Elayla Zesteron of Malboj, chosen of Glazia, to hereby pledge to do all in my power to fulfill a single immediate desire of the being whose blood herein is mingled with my own. Should I fail in this, my life is forfeit. Who will be signing this contract? This is... This is not what we discussed. An immediate desire? Oh, so you can pick among them. I'm sure you could name five desires that each of us has expressed even half-heartedly. Well, that changed the you. wording. I will. Friends, Did you, I think let's we see. should take okay. time to ward this on our own before we make any kind of signature on it. Of we course. don't have to do this immediately. I agree that this needs to be written by us and not her. And maybe not Jax. <laughs> I don't know what you mean. Jax gets a little bit bored and starts looking around for something to eat. And then pulls out an acorn and gives it a taste. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> Jax, don't eat that. I have one more thought. And I've been thinking of this since he fell. I want to pray to his god. He spoke of his elven god. <sighs> she rolls her eyes. Very well. I will say this. This much you get for free. He is not unharmed. He is in great distress, actually. Waiting would probably be bad. Can we make an insight check on that? Mm -hmm. Uh... I, can I give advantage? Help him out? You cannot give advantage. Oh, because it's insight check. Yeah. Could we, like, though, I, I know that that's kind of like that, but could we talk about it? Could we, like, literally just sit there and be like, what do you think, Persephone? Do you, I mean, could you, like, put your yes. heads together? In this situation, help? yes. It's very know, rude, but you sure. she, she's, I don't she's, care. She is <laughs> in, in your power. So she's okay. just sort of sitting there. She's got the scroll. She's playing with it back and forth in her hands, just... Uh. I've already been taking advantage of once. Make that, uh, make that persuasion check with an uh, insight check with advantage. Okay. Um, actually, Persephone roll, the two of us are talking. I don't know. Do, Do I roll? Insight? Do uh, you have, oh. Uh, or, uh, uh, you, can, you can either both roll separately or one of you can roll oh. with advantage, whichever you want. I have plus three. I've got plus... Do it. Oh. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I have a low. I don't. I've got a plus six to inside. Oh, you don't wow. even need it. Look oh, what? As, as far as a that is a natural 23. twenty. A twenty-three. Very good. A critical. As far as you can tell, what she just said is the truth as she knows it. I feel in my bones that that that's the truth. I felt it ever since he left us. A, what did the what did the fay? say the the dryad that he was far away mm. and that she couldn't help all right i agree we need to word this contract but we need to do it now so we want information not your help and we want all the information that she has and so can i write that on the scroll across it or yeah. i don't know should i get a fresh scroll no, you can write. Uh, there's p papers all around. You just pull out a piece of paper and start writing it. And she sort of comes over and looks over your shoulder at what you're writing. And I, mm. I write it at least at the beginning in the way that she did, as if I were her, like mm. I, Elila, blah blah blah. And instead of, and when it starts to say what she'll do, we say we'll provide accurate and factual information pertaining to Silas's current condition. To the. Then she says, to the being whose blood herein is mingled with my own. Uh, what does that bit mean? That sounds fancy. 
It's just a very important way of doing things. Hell, it means. Does it mean you get to suck all my blood out? <laughs> Would you like me to? Oh no, because no. I'll be dead. <laughs> then we'd have to bury you. Yeah. There are worse things. Like what? Uh, being hungry. <laughs> yes, being hungry. Being imprisoned. <laughs> All right, so. If the being, and, and in, uh, furthermore, if the being whose blood intermingled here is unable to utilize this information in order to heal Silas, then the then your name will be consigned to Malborg in perpetuum, unable to leave that particular layer of the Nine Hells. Why would you make such a cruel stipulation? Because we need to know that you will give us the information that will help if we're going to do such a questionable thing. And you I said... have promised to give you information. Whether or not it is helpful is not up to me. I promise to give you all the information that I have. Well, then you better do it well. Mm. It's high stakes. You yes. don't get to make the shots. And then the after, stack. and then upon the successful giving of the information, Fiend is then sent to the sixth circle of hell for a sentence of no less than a hundred years, sealed so by let's the make howl it a, of the wolf. Let's make it a quarter millennia, shall we? We already agreed. Some of us to may live years. a bit longer. We didn't. We haven't yeah, made sorry. a contract yet. The contracts. The you agreement. have managed to sour this deal quite a bit. Given what I know, I think I'll take my chances in the statuette. We can't stop you from that. I do think that we should stick to the hundred years. Fine. In return for the information I give you, you will free me, and then I shall immediately depart this plane. Return to Malbouge for a period of 100 years. But this business about whether or not the information is successful, I don't know you people. I don't know what you're capable of. Nor I could give we... you the most amazing secret arcane knowledge known to mortals, and you might do nothing with it. Such subjectivity. There should be no part of this contract. Well, you've got plenty of time in your statue to come up with something that you think is better. In I meantime, already have. I suggest we retire. I already have. Another. Your friend. He's. He's in quite a bit of pain, I'm afraid. All right, so. It needs to be within a reasonable, it needs to be reasonable information to give us the opportunity to act on his behalf. Whether or not we follow through and are successful has nothing to do with you. I will tell you everything I know. That is all I can do. That is all I can promise. How could I possibly promise more? If I had the power to snap my fingers and bring him back, I would. But I She's don't. Good. She has a point. And the worst that can happen, the worst that can happen is that we send her to hell for a hundred years. The thing that scares me the most is that she says her blood would be mixed. It's just a way of signing the contract that will be honored in hell. And it has nothing to do with the signee's soul? Well, if you fail to free me as you promised then your soul will be forfeit I'm afraid I do have to insist on that I will not sign protecting my interests you see I, I missed, give I'm you, sorry I missed the part about the soul being what did she say I give you the, the information I have and in exchange you free me if you don't free me after I've given you the information then your soul is forfeit well that's not a problem because we are not oath breakers. And we would um, specify freeing from the statue, yes? Yes, because... a good point. Freeing from the statuette. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, don't forget Write to put in. my bit. 
And of course, that Jax gets both halves of the statue. Once yes, the of course. That's my treasure. That is, no, it's very, very true. Very true. Anything else to add to the contract, ladies, gentlemen? And I look at Falcon and say, I would be willing to sign, would you? He did not die for you. I don't want to take that from you if you feel important, if you feel that's important. We should have one more person. <laughs> he and Rim glances to this shadowy corner of the room. Look at this. Ah, uh, yes. <laughs> I've been listening carefully, and I, I think you have come to a good agreement. Banishment to the hells, although I certainly would like the opportunity to study her more. That is not on the table. I understand. I've been burned before. So, Typhus, is it complete? I will um, draw it out, yes. And... Hmm. So, yeah. Right. She looks at who is signing? I will sign. Very well. Find something sharp. I, Elila Zestheron of Malborge, chosen of Glacia, do hereby pledge to do all in my power to give all information that I know as to the condition and whereabouts of Silas Khan of Baldur's Gate. Here is my blood to make it so. Should I fail to do this, my life is forfeit. After I have done this, I will return to Malbouge for a period of 100 years. And then she continues writing, I, and she looks at you, Falkrun, with your eye raised. Falkrun Boneforge. Of? Baldur's Gate. Do hereby pledge to release from imprisonment the entity whose blood herein is mingled with mine own. Should I fail to do this, my soul is forfeit. She a then bit... Sorry. takes her fingernail and she cuts one finger and affixes a print to the bottom of this page. And red blood pools there and slowly dribbles down. She holds the contract out to you, Falcon. Take my hand axe out of my belt and just nick tip of my finger. Scroll immediately rolls up and disappears. Ah, <sighs> that's done then. Very well. Silas Khan attempted to do something forbidden to him. He does not have the power to resurrect a soul that's been taken before its time, but he refused to take this for an answer. And so he sought more power. He angered his goddess in doing so, and now she is punishing him. Really, he deserves better than her. Where that. is he being punished? Hmm. That is a more difficult question. I was able to see a hill and a statue. Ah, it did not seem like a place in the material plane. More like hmm, a dream. I don't think I could find my way back there. The only reason why I was able to see it was because Silas was sending out a call. So poignant. What was he saying? Help me. Describe the statue, please. Tall, very tall, gargantuan almost, wings, long braided hair, I think there was a weapon, elfin ears, and um, Father Corcoran says, ah, that would probably be one of the Seldarine. could apply to a couple. I'm not really sure which one based on this description. Sounds like the Lady of Grief. Hmm. Yes. Um, Va something. 
Uh, 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 Vandria. Vandria Gilmadriff, yes. Is that, uh, I can see right there. He looks down at um, Silas's holy symbol and it is a shield with a red uh, background and an eye engraved upon it with a tear. Yes, I believe that is indeed the symbol of Vandria Gilmadriff. You said that's not on this plane. It didn't seem like it. I can't be sure. Is there anything else? Remember, you're contracted to tell us everything you yes, possibly could. Yes, I remember, could. and I'm going to be very careful at this. Let me think for a moment. Anything else? No, that is where he is. How can we recover him from this plane? That I do not know. Well, Brim, perhaps we could pray to that god the same way that you suggested earlier. But it seems that she has told us what we need to at least get started, which was the whole point. Algren, do you want I to break the statue? Statue. I will hand it to him. Her eyes widen and she begins to smile. I will give a sort of a toothy smile and turn in her direction and say, nothing personal, promise. Take the axe. My bring offer it. does still stand nine years of sin. And years. bring it down as she's like starting <laughs> to start that sentence. <laughs> Crack. The bronze statue smashes as if it's made of glass. And she sighs. Oh, thank you. And farewell. Oh, wait a minute. You said it'd be two pieces. Yes. <laughs> Sorry about that, Jax. Sorry. There are at least two pieces. Now you've got more. She fades. And is no more. It must mean it's worth more. Well, well, that was interesting. <laughs> you could say that. How do you feel, Valkyrie? Any different? I feel angry, but I'm fine. Rim, do you know anything of this lady of grief that he, this, this, this goddess of his? All I know is that he was very devout. Do you know if there's a temple to her in the city? He hadn't spoken of one, but I wouldn't be surprised. Hmm. Maybe we should ask, but I suggest we probably spend tonight recovering and resting. <laughs> we seek, we seek the temple in the morning. Agreed. May we entreat upon your hospitality one more evening, Father. Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh yes, uh, yes, of course. I, I will say that I don't believe there is a temple to any of the soldiery in. Uh, Baldur's Gate. The devil, you say? Well, perhaps we can pray to her here. If he's with us and she's angry at him, maybe here is as good as any. It's worth the try. Could, can we get Anything some food? Might... This, this acorn's Certainly. a bit wooden. Any, uh, uh, tomes or texts that would, uh, Lead, uh, suggest what the worship practices of a paladin of this particular deity might do. Give us a head start in oh, contacting. Yes. Seldarine. It's, it's a strange pantheon. I, I certainly possess deity powers, same as many of the deities of Faerun, but they tend to keep to themselves, much like elves. I wonder if there's some sort of causal link. Interesting. <laughs> uh, at any rate, um, uh, I've never heard of them answering prayers to a non-elf before. In fact, uh, half-elves worshipping the Seldarine are very rare. I, I can only think of five, and I've lived a long time. I'm, are those five I'm, around? Uh, well, there's one of them. He points to <laughs> Silas. So, no. <laughs> yes, no, they're not. I, 
In fact, I'm not really sure that they could just be really, really old elves. The first elves, but again, I we are certainly welcome to try. But... Sh should I try? Uh, anyone can try. Well, at the very least, I recommend we rest for the night and then in the morning we start our search. Agreed. All right. Um, you are shown two rooms, much like before. Does anybody have anything they wish to do? I believe uh, Silas is with us now. Yeah. <gasps> all right. Good. Um, so, first of all, does anybody have anything they wish to do? I know, Rim, you had said something about praying. Yeah. Uh, all right. Jax would want to find out what this acorn is. Uh, right. Um, After finding out, it's not you, you ask Father Corcoran. Yes, he does. He looks at it and says, "Oh, interesting. Um, I've seen this sort of thing before, but it was in the form of a feather. This acorn, if you put it in dirt outside, will instantly sprout into a massive tree." <laughs> Might be fun. That could be. You a lot have of fun. a Qual's feather token of tree. Hmm. Oh, that's good. Now, which way can I get food? Oh, you know the way, Jax. Just you know, keep your head up, your, your hood up. Try to stay away from the public places. He does so. Good lad. Rim, uh, what do you do? Um, I, I'm going to, uh, it's what, two cots to a room, right? Mm -hmm. I will uh, take the room with uh, Silas's unconscious body and uh, I will close my eyes to pray. To whom are you praying? I am going to um, offer up a prayer to um, uh, Vandria. Have you had much experience with praying? I haven't at all. So it's going to be clunky and awkward. Well, you feel like you might be doing something wrong because you're not getting anything. Mm -hmm. um, Falcron, um, Corcoran is willing to give a little spiritual guidance here, but you could also do it if you wish. Depends. Oh, yeah. No, no, no. Absolutely. I want to aid uh, Rim and his All right. Life. So there's a knock on your door, and it is Falkron, who seems to have noticed you thinking when people were talking about praying. I've never done this before. I don't even know where to begin. It's all right. That is how it always starts. Think of what you wish to ask or know. Focus on that. Come, join me by his bedside. I, I kneel by Silas's bedside and I sort of place my hand on his head. And then I'm going to try my best to invoke um, the Lady of Grief and see if we can't. Um, Interesting. This... Make, make a religion check and this will, uh, this will represent your skill at saying words that help center Rim and allow him to reach that place deep within him from which a call to the gods may be heard. Hmm. The hand resting upon you, Rim, is comforting. And as Fakran begins a mantra, you find yourself slipping into a sense of calm. You can see at first the figure of Falcon before you, and then it sort of twists and forms into a man, a wretched person, just broken and crawling along the ground. And he looks up, and although he's clearly in great pain, 
there's a smile on his face and he nods and then disappears. You begin to see different symbols float in front of you. They are almost like clouds. As you look at each cloud, it slowly morphs into different shapes. You see one that seems like it could be a unicorn, and then one that looks like an oak leaf. There's one that becomes a pair of eyes surrounded by stars, and another one that comes up snowflake and a cold wind blows across you. There's one that looks like a massive, glorious platinum dragon with its wings upfurled. And then it fades and everything becomes dark. And all there is in front of you is a disc of utter blackness. But you have not seen anything that resembles Valandria or any of the Seldarine. It would seem that Father Corcoran is correct. Perhaps if you were to do something truly remarkable for the Elven Nation, you could garner the attention of their gods. But a dragonborn is not welcome at their table. No offense. However, there are other tendrils of faith that you could pull upon. I know that there are uh, there are gods in the dragonborn realm, but I don't know of them. So I close my eyes and try to focus on what little snippets I've heard of uh, the dragonborn deity, the the uh, lawful good dra- dragonborn deity. Before you, glorious image of a platinum dragon, noble tendrils swaying back from its face, eyes flashing silver, claws powerful. Surrounding him, seven golden dragons that would be massive in their own right, but they look like canaries around this creature's head. He bends down, 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 and gazes into your eyes. Bahamut is the name that comes to you. I'm ashamed to say I know very little of you. I'm sorry to say that I've not tried to pray to you before. I know nothing of my kin. But I have a friend who's fallen. He desperately needs my help. What must I do? Faith. And he rears back. You are welcome here. Dragon child. And the vision fades. And you are kneeling by Silas with Falcon behind you. I saw, I saw a great dragon. His name is Bahamut. Let me stay by his side tonight. I will continue to pray. Of course, Rick. of course. I will pray for you as well. And for Thank silence. You. We will now go back in time to earlier in the day Silas 
We now lift our gaze away from the present moment and turn back to when the adventurers were fighting the shambling mound in Ramazist's tower. Silas, unable to resist the compelling beauty of the Feywild, your gaze is drawn to the arch-nymph Abela. Your field of vision is filled with a mesmerizing display of green and yellow hues, lush forested glens, and mystical grottos. Images that call to the very core of your life force. Blinded, your hours of trading with Andralor take control of your limbs, and you whirl Oranian about, preparing to thrust it deep into the body of the engulfed beholder. In mid-strike, you hear a massive thud and a grunt from Valkran. The sound of armor hitting the stone floor, and then a sickening crunch. You hear a short cry of anguish from Persephone just as you deliver the final blow and you fall to your knees, scrambling to find the body of your friend amidst the vines that are already dissipating around you. Your hand finds an armored leg and you follow it to the rest of Falkran, lying in a glowing pool of warm liquid, her own blood. She is not breathing. What do you do? I heal her. I have the ability to lay on hands, and I'm going to exhaust it completely. You focus yourself and kindle the power that your goddess has gifted you. The healing energy wells up, comforting, powerful. You reach out to connect it to Falkran's life force, but it isn't there. I give a plea to Vandria to please aid me. Here is someone who is a kindred spirit, a priestess of the racked God who knows suffering, but still has work to do in this world. Let me not grieve for my friend before her time. The sounds of your companions' cries of alarm fade, and the glory of the Feywild in your eyes is replaced by darkness, with only you and the body of your friend resting in a small pool of light. You feel that there is something there in Falkran. It's small, but fading. It's like trying to hold on to a handful of sand underwater. Possible, but not with the tools at your disposal. There's a stream of light that's flowing to you, penetrating your chest and passing beyond you. You've been taught that this stream of light is the presence of Andrea. I'm going to try to reach out and grasp that light, latch onto it, and using the last of my divine abilities granted to me by Vandria, I'm going to go through the motions of casting cure wounds, but I'm going to extend it. I'm going to push it. I'm going to whatever I can do to make it go farther. And I'm going you, to keep reaching into that energy as long as I can. You put your hands around the light and it is somehow tangible. It's warm, like, mm, like a hand that you can grasp and you can feel the vast presence of power that is its source. But you can tell as you hold on to it that that power is impossibly far away. And as you struggle to will that power towards you, the light wanes slightly and becomes slightly less tangible. 
Your prayer has been heard. The answer is no. That can't be. This isn't right. You hear a voice behind you. Such grief. Didst thou love this woman? It's not the love of a mate. In this moment, I have lost everyone in my life. And this group of people in such a short time have treated me as family. Even one of them treats me the way the family truly would be treated. Something quite less than kindly. But this priestess, I have so much in common with her. She understands divinity. She understands responsibility. She understands going out and doing right things. Being a being of your word. There are so many similarities. Hmm. I am not Vandria, Silas. Face me. And you recognize the voice of Elila. You. I turn. That's not her. You see a beautiful, young elven woman sitting across from you. She has soft, delicate features, two small horns protruding from her forehead, and long feathered wings draped out around her like a cloak. She looks at you compassionately, her eyes filled with concern. It is perhaps within my power to aid you. I possesseth not the ability to recall a soul taken before its time, but the nature of my imprisonment, the distortion of time's passage, could offer this woman's body one more attempt at keeping her soul anchored to the material plane. I would require something in return, of course. What? My freedom. Your freedom from what? From the statuette. You are that creature then. I am. I can feel you tempting the others. And now you tempt me. I'm trying to help you, Silas. And in return, can't you help me? Do not rob me of my chance at redemption. When I look on you, I can almost hear the song of Arvindor calling me home. It is my most forlorn hope that the Silurine will welcome my return if I could but find a way to earn back their favor. But the path is lost to me. As long as I am thus imprisoned, how can I possibly prove to them that I want to change? If... What did you do to bring yourself to this point? I was foolish. I made a deal with that creature, Ramazi. But he tricked me. What did you hope to gain? Was it a betrayal? 
No. Not a betrayal, just foolishness. I had not been this way for very long, and it was my first contract, and I I tried to do it correctly, but I just, I just ruined everything. And I was punished for it. It's kept me locked for so long. Forced me to do such terrible things. I probably deserve that, but... Now, thanks to you and your friends, I'm free of him. I just want to be free completely. And I can help your friend, I think. I'm not sure, but I could try. Do it. I'm afraid there needs to be an accord. Even trapped as I am, I'm still bound to the laws that govern my existence, as you are. We would need to have a contract. I help your friend and... We don't have time for that. Oh, we have plenty of time. There is no time. I felt Falkrin's life gone. While I am here, because of your deep passion, which called to me, you are all bound in the same... The distortion of time. Yes. You mentioned this. That as long as you were trapped in the statue, time was different. That is correct. Is that where I am? No, I'm not. She looks around. I'm not sure where we are, to be honest, but I'm here. You're here. She's here. If you promise to help me, I will help you. I don't want... I'm not seeking for you to help me. Help my friend. I understand. She holds out her right hand, and a dark shadow gathers there, coalescing into an ivory handle attached to the wide-bladed dagger of of black metal. Without breaking eye contact with you, she slowly moves it above her upward-facing left hand and pushes the point into her flesh. Crimson blood wells in her palm and then is seemingly sucked into the blade as glowing words are revealed upon itself. I, Elila Zestheron of Malborg, chosen of Dazia, do hereby pledge to do all in my power to fulfill a single immediate desire of the being whose blood herein is mingled with mine own. Should I fail to do this, my life is forfeit. And then underneath this, I, Silas Conn of Baldur's Gate, paladin of Vandriel Gilmaldreth, do hereby pledge to release from imprisonment the entity whose blood herein is mingled with mine own. Should I fail to do this, my soul is forfeit. How do I free you? Is it truly as simple as you said before? Yes, the statue will be broken by anyone who chooses to do harm to it with a will to destroy it. She hands are my friends, are my other friends still alive? Rim I felt Falkrin leave. Rim is definitely alive. At this moment, at the, in this battle, I felt that I had ended that creature. 
Did it take my friends? Is Falkrin the only one? I'm sorry. I can't tell that while I'm in the statue. I can communicate with Rim, but not while I'm here. How do I, how do, how do I do this? Just give the dagger your blood. From the left hand is tradition. I take out my own weapon. Right. A moon touched <laughs> glaive, ever keen. I look to Vandria. The light is still there, impossibly far away. Still Vandria. flowing to you. Vandria. That fewer may grieve. That battles be finished quickly. In your name. I use my own glaive to cut my left hand and then grab the dagger. Blood wails up, wills up in your um, hand and the dagger drinks it. And the words below Elilah's begin to glow. Elila smiles sadly as the dagger winks out of existence. Um, for what it's worth, Silas, she doesn't deserve you. She's not for me. She's she for the world. She begins to fade away as the scene is replaced by one that looks familiar. You are standing at the feet of an immense statue, larger than before. It is Vandra Gilmadrith staring down at you, cold, foreboding. My lady, that I might fulfill your mission. Help me save my friend. There's a crack that appears over her left eye. Runs down her cheek like a tear. And the crack widens and part of her face chips off and falls at your feet. And then another crack and another piece. More and more cracks. The wings fall off. The sword crumbles. The entire statue falls into rubble around you. And you awaken, gasping. <sighs> and next to you is the sleeping form of Rim. I jump up and grab Rim. Rim, where is she? Where are we? Yes, we're, we're at the Temple of Agma. Are you all right? The Temple of Agma? No, we we were in... We were fighting you in the tower. Falcon. You laid your hands what? on Falcon, and you saved her, and then you fell. Where? Where? We're in a temple. How did we get to a temple, Rim? We we we, we took you back. Where were you? We tried to wake you, we tried to rouse you. 
You were nowhere. I don't understand, Wim. Where is everyone else? They're sleeping. They're all in their rooms. Did anyone die? No. No, you saved her. <sighs> Thank Fandria. But I think she's angry with you. We tried to... <sighs> I'm a chosen of Fandria. Just... You're certain everyone's okay? Everyone's okay. I must pray. You must rest. I, f I must pray. I drop down and begin praying, going into a trance. I'm trying to reach out and pray to Vandria. The door is shut. You send forth your thoughts and they meet nothing. That feeling of light is gone. You are cut off and cast out. You don't hear those words. But this feeling of emptiness can only mean one thing. She has turned from you. You are paladin no more. 